Hello, welcome to the Battlefield Podcast, Episode 5. How can we tell when God is speaking to us? Stay tuned. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the battlefield, and today we have a great topic for you. Um, on the battlefield, it's filled with chaos and a lot of noise, and today we're going to be talking about the noise you should be hearing, and that is the voice of God. So I want to start right out with the question, does God speak to us? Well, I mean, according to... Uh... <laughs> Uh, according to John chapter 10, he, he tells us that, um, you know, we'll hear that, that those that are following Christ, that they uh, will hear his voice, they will know his voice, they'll be able to obey his voice, they'll, all of those things. And so, um, you know, God, unless he were to, uh, when we get saved or we come to faith, automatically give us all of the knowledge of his will, he has to still communicate with us because we're still battling with this. You know, how do we navigate all this stuff in life? How do we, you know, we come to different uh, terrain in the battlefield. We come to different things and we're like, what do I do? How do I approach this? Or when we mess up, you know, like, mm -hmm. man, how do I respond? How do I respond when that person's a jerk? How do I respond when I was the jerk? How do I? And and so, yeah, God, God speaks to us. So we just got to find out how and how do we tune our ears to be able to hear it. Yeah, I believe God speaks to us, too, on different levels in our walk, too. He meets us where we're at, um, just like Jesus that's did good. in the Bible. Mm -hmm. He always met you. He didn't overload you with anything because that's part of love and compassion, right? Yeah. To, yeah. to not try to put anybody in any situation that they're not ready for, they're not prepared for. And our Father is the expert at doing that. Um, it just recalls me, like we said, David and Goliath. Everybody knows that story. But people don't realize that um, God put him against a bear and a lion first. So he actually prepared him for that. So when he was walking to the battle and everybody else was looking at Goliath's size and, oh, you know, how could you, you know, blah, blah, blah. They didn't realize, and maybe he didn't even realize it, that God had already prepared him. That's where his confidence come from. You know what I mean? So he does the same thing with us. So most of the times when... When God is talking to us, we need to realize, okay, what is he saying to me? Because a lot of times we ask that question because we want him to do some type of quick fix, yes. right? Right now, like, oh, God's not talking to me because this problem wasn't solved, right? Yeah. Well, it's probably because you're looking at this problem and the problem was the problem that caused that problem, you know yeah, what I mean? And right. he's talking to you <laughs> yeah. on that level. And I think that that is part of the uh, problem, the way we need to really look at ourselves and see where how did I get here and uh, what am I really asking God to right. do for me? Yeah, yeah. No, so so. It, is it an audible voice? Is it a scruffy guy in a camel hair shirt <laughs> eating crickets coming out of the desert? Is it my conscience? How do we know? What? How does he speak to us? How do we know? I, I, I believe you. I, I know that God speaks to you without a, a shadow of a doubt. But how? Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, oh, you are. okay, I get that. Uh, yeah, um, I, you know, there's, yeah, I think that there's, there's lots of competing voices today. So mm -hmm. kind of go on that to that. Good. There's a lot of competing voices as to what's, what's right, what's, mm -hmm. um, what we should be doing. So we've got, you know, our modern day uh, mantras of things like YOLO and follow your heart and just be you, those types <laughs> of things, you know. Um, but we see that a lot of those lead down some really dangerous paths um, because if we really operate in our life uh, with a disregard for anyone else, man, that's a selfish road. That's a lonely road. Um, in Romans 12, 1 and 2, one of the things it tells us is that we can have our minds transformed and know the will of God. So that's what I think we're normally asking is that, you know, what's God's will for me? And so, so there's a few ways that God's done that. You know, and I think that God can choose to reveal himself any way that he chooses. Mm -hmm. um, but he's also, he's chosen certain ways to reveal himself. You know, so I think there are some things that we've got to, you know, look for to hear the word of God. Uh, one of them is to be in the word of God, mm -hmm. right? So uh, through scripture, because there's some things that God doesn't have to repeat. 
See, okay. we, we keep asking God sometimes to repeat some things that he's like, I've already kind of solidified that one. You know, so like, you don't need to pray if it's God's will, whether you should have an affair or not. The answer is no. He's already answered <laughs> yeah, that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, uh -huh. but, but it's that thing where we get into the word of God, that's part of how we hear the, the voice of God. Um, there's a song, uh, it's called Enough, and one of the things it says in it, it says, don't, don't tell me God is silent when your Bible is closed. Yes. Right, and that's Ouch, such a yeah. yeah, such a powerful thing. And so, um, I, I think that we we don't spend enough time, you know, digging in there. To say what what has God already said? Instead of saying God say something new to me, we need to understand what He's already said, and that's how we get in the Word and, and dig into that. Yeah. So I've heard guys say like, well, God doesn't speak to you unless you're saved. Mm. Oh. Um, what do you think about that? I, 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 uh, I don't know if I believe that. I, I don't. I don't think I that. Yeah, that. I don't think God would do that. Uh, I think that, he, like you said, He died on the cross when we were yeah. yet sinners. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So His His grace uh, goes beyond our comprehension. Mm -hmm. So what we we usually don't talk or give advice, especially to somebody we don't like, right? Yeah. Uh -huh. But God has to be different from us, like in a sense of his bounds and what he can what he does uh even uh without doing like creating the world not huge things but even on little things mm -hmm. he, he must be a totally different creature than us so i think that he does talk to people um who who don't know him or who or even people who don't uh yeah. give him credit for you know his yeah. love and his grace yeah, so I, I recognizing agree. his voice yes. is is different than him actually speaking because you know like because because he you know god uses i mean what scripture says he put the law in our hearts yes. that includes his believers unbelievers everybody oh, that was put in within us that's the reason that almost every civilization throughout history has had very similar moral codes Yes, yeah. You know, because there was something underlying there that was just kind of built into, you mm -hmm. know. Um, but my, my thing would be, if God doesn't speak to the unbeliever and it's the Holy Spirit that draws us to is. Christ for salvation, how would we he ever there. draw us mm -hmm. to Christ? Right. Part of my story is that I was not raised in church at all. I had no influence from God, no biblical influence, no spiritual influence whatsoever. This is a quick plug for our website because you can go on our website and hear our testimonies. Yes. So uh, jump over there real quick and you can hear our stories. Part of my story is I was not raised in church. But now looking back on my life from my earliest memories, I can see the influence of God in my life and how it sh he began shaping my life at a very early age. Um, I just did not know it was God until... Yes decades later and I realized yeah. um, so yeah I completely believe it. you're right how how is he going to woo us toward himself unless he speaks to us mm -hmm. uh, even as non-believers yeah yeah absolutely yeah I, I agree um, that because the same thing with um, you know in my growing up because we, we grew up we we're poor we're out in the country we're those things and and for a while and, and my dad had some things going on it was the same thing you know you were just recording your your testimony and so same thing I knew my parents loved me there was no doubt about that um, but I, I also knew that man there were some things that uh, that, that were broken there mm -hmm. were some things that and that in that whole thing I wrestled with that for a long time like God why did why did I have to be born into a poor family why did I have to be born into a family that had these struggles mm -hmm. and, and this trauma and this background and it's one of those things that God finally revealed to me you know and, and I think it's it's what uh, you know you find in 2nd Corinthians 1 where he, he tells us he said that you comfort others in their affliction as God has comforted you in your affliction and it's that idea that every part of our life has has meaning and purpose okay. even the really hard parts and God is, is guiding and speaking to us all the way through, you know, that whole, that whole process. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's go. No, I, well, I was going to agree with you. There's a lot of noise out there today. Um, almost from the time my alarm clock goes off in the morning, there's a hundred uh, uh, things screaming for my attention. Mm -hmm. I think it was C.S. Lewis who said it's like, it's like a um, stampede mm -hmm. of things drawing for my attention 
just rushing at me. Um, I got this bill to pay. I got this call to make. I got this problem going on at work. I need to do this today. I need to study my Bible some. I need, there's all these things. And in the back of that huge stampede of things screaming for my attention is Christ. Like, hey, what about me? Hey, hey, listen to me. So with all of that noise, with all of that stuff screaming for our attention, plus I believe that every second of every day God is trying to reveal himself to us. Every second of every day. So out of all that noise, how do we pick out, oh, that's the voice of God. That's what I need to listen to. How do we distinguish that from all these other voices, all these other things? Yeah, yeah. Hey, I, 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 I just look, I just look over. It. Well, well uh, you know, I, I, God revealed to me that He has characteristics like us, right? He has yes. certain characteristics um, that are His own, you know. Just like there's certain things that if you heard, oh, Chris did X, Y, and Z, you would be like, hold up. I know right, Chris's right, right, right. character. Right. And God does that same thing. Well, it's like good. one of the thing, main things is he's consistent, mm -hmm. right? And then he also has, uh, he, he, he wants us to, like he wants us to love other mm -hmm. people. He wants us to forgive even when we don't need to, even yeah, when yeah. we feel like we shouldn't forgive. So there's certain things like that. And he doesn't, uh, he doesn't put condemnation on us, right? Mm -hmm. He convicts us. Mm -hmm. So there's certain char characteristics where you can almost line it up, like with is is that God talking to me? You know, yeah. um, through through those type of things. And then I would even go as far as to say about nine times out of ten, when you hear God's voice, it's mm -hmm. something you don't want to do. <laughs> yes, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, as far as it's, yeah. it's something that's going to push you. Uh, to almost do something that you don't feel like you could do because with the way we the way faith works is right we have to go into this unknown almost in order to tap into God yeah. right so um, most of the time and just to be honest most of the time when when I've heard God's voice it was something that I was kind of mulling over should I do X Y and Z and then I laid out everything on the table and most of, I'm, I'm not even kidding, like, <laughs> I say nine times out of ten, but ten times out of ten, it was the, the one thing that I knew, you kind of know mm -hmm. what you need to do, but you, you didn't want to go there because you couldn't mm -hmm. see it. Yeah. You couldn't see the outcome. So uh, a lot of the times that's, that's, that's how I know God's voice because I lay, lay it up, okay, is it consistent? Is it pushing me towards something that's going to make okay. not only make me better, but push my wife? Because now we're one. Mm -hmm. Push my kids. You know, no matter what other area of it is, even if it's like working out, or mm -hmm. it's something that doesn't necessarily directly correlate. Mm -hmm. But I know it's hard. I don't want to do it. But if I stay consistent in whatever it is, it'll push me towards not only pushing my wife, but my kids and myself. Right. And then I can be a light to other people too. Mm -hmm. So. That's kind of the, the way that I recognize when um, when God has talked to me. I, mm -hmm. I line it up against those. When we're talking about hearing the voice of God, we're talking about spiritual things. And when we're trying to tap into spiritual things, I think we would all agree that there's good spiritual influences and there's very <laughs> bad spiritual influences. Um, there is two sides to that world. Mm -hmm. yes. and. I think right off the bat, you cannot trust everything that's spiritual. That's right. Um, so, uh, I mean, do we need cards? Do we need crystals? Do we need, you know, how, how do we, I mean, there's a lot of people who tap into spiritual things and think that it's God or say that it's God. And one of the main things I like what you said is God never goes against himself. Yeah, He's not going to tell you that's not, uh, you know. Well, line it up with scripture. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's like the, uh, we saw there was, there was a, a psychic that had an office that uh, they closed to, to unforeseen circumstances. You know. <laughs> uh, did you see that? <laughs> COVID shut them down. They didn't know what would happen, you know. Um, but, <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, so what we have to realize that there, there are, Supernatural power. There, there are spiritual. There's a spiritual reality, a spiritual yeah. world going on. 
but there's only two sides to the spiritual realm. There's, there's God and his holy angels. Um, and then there's Satan, who is an angel, a fallen angel, and the, the other fallen angels. So, so those, those are the two spiritual realms that really speak to us. Um, and what John said in, in 1 John 1, uh, 4, 1, he says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. He yes. says, but test the spirits to determine if they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. And, and so how do, we, how do we test the spirits? Of course, we get in God's word, but we, we compare it to his character. So God is unchanging. Yes. Right? He's, he's absolutely holy and absolutely righteous. So that means he'll never, God's will will never be for you to commit a sin. Mm -hmm. it, that's never God's will to tell you that's to go correct. commit a sin. Um, it's never God's will. That, I mean, what he's told us and commanded us, it remains the same. Now, we look in Scripture, and, and many people would bring up, well, what about in Leviticus, this passage? Or what about in, and they'll pull some random, obscure passage. Um, and then what happens is there's not been good uh, contextual study done to know who was speaking, what was going on, uh, what was the, there was a particular topic. Uh, not all commands are for all people of all times. Uh, and so we have to we have to wade through that and do good, you know, exegetical Bible study. Um, but, yeah, we have to, you know, test it. How do, how do we know, though, when a spirit is not from God? What about dreams? Yeah. Can God speak to us in <laughs> dreams? I think, I think, I mean, yeah, he, he, I believe he can. Uh, he can use dreams. He can use anything he created. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, but uh, it's the interpretation that can can sometimes I think that you need to rely on good godly counsel sometimes to interpret one. it interpret stuff uh, instead of you know asking the question yourself and then trying to answer it yourself right mm -hmm. um, so yeah you I definitely think you need to get around other good believers yeah. who can give you a different perspective on those dreams because dreams can be really 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 tricky yes. uh, hard to interpret well and I think one of the things we do is is it sometimes and, and I think the reason that God sometimes he, he, he will use whatever it takes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That, that's, I love yeah. that. Simple you know, it, it, yeah. it, it, he'll use whatever it takes. And so some of us are hard headed where it takes really big <laughs> things. Uh, some of us, I mean, I'm sure there's some people that the first time they heard the gospel, yes. they accepted and then they follow Christ perfectly or wow. as perfectly as they could for the rest of their life. But for the rest of us, you know, it's this process and, and it does, you know, um, it, it is one of those things where, um, dreams and anything that is is what we might view as miraculous or supernatural if we're not careful we can put an overemphasis on those things where we'll trust that and an interpretation of that more than we would trust like his word or or here's the thing if you if you're wondering where God if God is speaking to you have you prayed and asked him the wisdom to understand what he's saying because that's one of the passages in James that is a command or uh, a promise to to all believers of all time is if you pray for wisdom, he says he'll give it. That's right. So some people right. spend all their time going to folks asking for interpretations when they could just say, "Hey God, what does that mean?" Yeah. And and listen, you know, as God speaks. Yeah. Right. I, I wish I knew where it was in Scripture, but I don't. But it, it, it says somewhere in Scripture in the New Testament it says, "Beware of signs and." Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it goes right along with uh, in John where it says to test the spirits. Um, but uh, one of the main things, and Chris, I think you said it, is scripture. Man, anytime uh, God is not a, a God of confusion. No. Anytime yeah. you're confused, especially about what you're hearing from God, you can find, if not the answer, then a solid direction mm -hmm. toward the answer in scripture. Which means you've got to have a a vital um, uh, you know habit of reading scripture. Mm -hmm. um, yes, sometimes it's difficult to understand, uh, but I like that the Bible says it's a living thing. Mm -hmm. It changes when you read it. Sometimes this oh, might yes. mean something. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it may not. Uh, one of my favorite practices is to uh, read scripture repetitively mm -hmm. so I'll take a, 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 five, a book of the Bible like Philippians mm -hmm. and read that one book every day for 30 days yeah. and there's something about that repetitive reading the way my mind works that it just begins to stick and right. change things you might try it well I mean you told me the same thing 
and Philippians was really powerful, uh, especially, so you're reading it first, but then after you, you realize that this, uh, Paul was in prison, Yeah, right? You know what I'm saying? You don't really think about that. But then when you start to read it repetitively, you start to, it starts to like, uh, like a movie, like yes. a vivid, like you can see mm -hmm. him, you know, in the dungeon. I mean, it was a dungeon back then, right? Basically. Uh, but you, you read in all the, the edification he, he gives to the, mm -hmm. the, you know what I'm saying? He's just edifying, edifying, lifting them up, lifting them up. And then you realize, whoa, yeah. this guy's in prison, which yeah. makes it yeah. even more beautiful. But the first times around, that's why the repetitive is it, so true. Uh, you don't really get the, that understanding, you know what I'm saying? And so that's that's so true. And you you brought me onto that, so I really appreciate that because um, that really brought uh, I mean clarity, so much clarity yeah. to what the situation is. And like you said, you got to realize sometimes like more than just you got to realize the times that they're in, the time yes. yep. period, what's going on. You got yep. the historical facts, everything. It just brings a more vivid picture. Yeah, it, well, and it makes it clear because you, you, as you do repetitive reading, you start asking questions that you didn't ask yes. the first few times. Like, wait, why does he say that? And why does he reference that particular person or thing? And then, mm -hmm. okay, well, let me do a little research on that. And, oh, okay, this opens up another thing. And it's and that's that's really where a good, good Bible study is. It's in the asking good questions, you know. Um, but repetitive, it just exposes you to the Word of God over and over. Yeah. And you experience it. Um, you know, and so, yeah, so the Word of God, so what, what about, yes. I'm going to throw a, I'm going to play devil, I'm, I'm, I'm going to slip, in, slip into your chair over here, <laughs> and uh, what about people that don't have a Bible? How can they hear the Word of God? Oh, wow. You mean like they don't have access to the internet? Meaning they don't have <laughs> access, <laughs> yes, it, either to the internet or to their, maybe even the Bible translated into their language, so even if they have access, they're, because we're still, we still haven't got the Bible translated in all languages. How does God? What is well, God? Rick, the Bible <laughs> says this in Romans chapter one. Hey, yeah, yeah. It says in Romans chapter one that God uh, uh, reveals Himself mm -hmm. in yeah. all of creation, yeah. so that none are without excuse. Yeah. Um, that's a big statement. It is. Um, uh, I. That's that's a good one. I I think. Um, well, for one. God's not going to tell you one thing in Scripture tell you another. But I think it is the, the feeling that you get after entertaining those thoughts. Is there more confusion? Is there more fear? Or is there peace and certainty? Yeah. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, man, that is a tough one. Uh, That's tough. Because I do. That's one of my first things. I go right to prayer and to Scripture. And if I didn't have a Bible, that would be... Yeah. Well, uh, well. Even you talk about prayer and scripture. Uh, let's be honest. We grew up in America, right? Mm -hmm. So we've always been <laughs> indoctrinated in some type yeah. of Christian belief, even if we didn't necessarily believe it. Like you heard it. Uh -huh. It's like you can't escape it, which is a good thing. I'm not saying it's not a good thing, but like you said, if if you're in a place to where you're not getting indoctrinated in, in you know, into that. Uh, in a good way, once again, you're getting introduced to it. But, um, I mean, just think about that. You know what I mean? Like, like it's hard for us to even yeah. think about because we've been uh, introduced to it so much. But, uh, well, I guess what I'm trying to get to is that God is uh, talking through other means in that way. Mm -hmm. um, like, let's say, like, when somebody wakes up in the morning and they have a, a breath. Ugh. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like after over time, I think you would start to think, you know, where does that come from? Mm -hmm. Or even if they see their, their kids playing mm -hmm. or if yes. they see like, they, okay, I fell in love with this woman. Even if they don't call it love, they fell in love. We had these little kids and now my kid is always happy. You know what I'm saying? Like they're yes. seeing all this joy and stuff. So I, I believe God does, you know, like yes. you said, reveals himself in these things, yeah. even if you don't know the name. You know yeah. what I mean? Well, the reason I ask is because most of the people in Scripture didn't have Scripture. Oh, yes, you're right. You're right. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and, and so, like, you, right. have, you have guys like Abraham. So Abraham gets repeated over and over in the New Testament where Paul makes the case. He says, you know, that God spoke to Abraham and, and Abraham believed and it was credited to him uh, for righteousness, you know. 
And so here's one of the things. It's only in the Western world that Christianity is dis declining. Because, I mean, and, and it's, it's uh, Eastern, Southern Hemisphere, uh, you know, where Christianity is actually growing. So you have places where it's a majority Muslim countries where there are uh, Muslim people who are saying that, that Christ came to them in dreams and they, they get saved and they walk away from, from Islam. And you've got, we knew a missionary that went to India and this guy had never read, uh, they, they started talking to a guy who was uh, a Hindu and um, had never, never read scripture, but his wife got saved and he was really against it and everything. And when they went to go visit him, he started quoting scripture because he said, no, I accept it too. And he's quoting scripture he never read. Hmm. Wow. Because God mm. God isn't limited. Because so, we live in the United States of distraction, right? <laughs> How <laughs> we, is that? Yeah. Yeah. Because, and, and so it's sometimes in simpler uh, countries, I, I don't want to say simpler countries, sim simpler cultures, you can hear things that we don't really hear. And I'm talking about, you know, not just physically, but I'm, I'm talking about spiritually, spiritually and stuff. You know, and so, but we, one of the things that God always does, as soon as someone comes to faith, he guides them back to the truth of his word, you know. And so we have this great benefit of having the word of God, making it super simple uh, because it's laid out right there for us. Mm -hmm. We don't have to wonder, is that the voice of God or not? Because we can go to scripture and compare it. Um, so, yeah, I think that one of those things is when we're, when God speaks, he always brings peace because, again, he's yes. the God of peace. Yes, that's so, so he good. always brings peace. It's not fear. It's it's contentment and resting knowing that what he's telling you to do is the right thing whereas satan rushes us and wants to force us into you know these quick decisions that uh, are fear induced rather than peace induced and you know all of these things and so so one of the things i always tell people and we have a, a very similar uh thing but i always use four things there's there's four ways or four testimonies that uh you can know whether god's speaking to you or not one is what's God laying on your heart, mm -hmm. so that that's that's part of it. So what's the what's the Spirit? Especially if you're a believer, you have the Holy Spirit living within you already. So what's the Spirit revealing to you inwardly, right? Um, and so then, so you have the inward testimony of the the Holy Spirit. You then look at the Word of God. What's the what is God revealed to you through Scripture? But then you have mature believers, you know. Um, that that are honest I, I think it's it's key to when we say mature it's not meaning uh someone who seems to always have it together but it's someone who's honest about their walk oh man yeah uh, because we got a lot of people every church says they're a bible believing, believing church <laughs> every every pastor says he's following god and spending all this time but yet we see churches and pastors falling all over the place yes. and we're seeing now with of course <laughs> with social media and stuff, we see some weird practices that some of these churches have that aren't scriptural, but yet they believe they're Bible-believing churches, right? But you go to a, a mature believer, and, and this is where discipleship and trusting relation church, this is where you get those those you know trusting uh, relationships really help. And, and so, so you have uh, the inner testimony of the Spirit, uh, testimony through Scripture as you read it, and then uh, testimony of other mature believers in the church. And then you have, what doors do, does God start opening and closing? Like there are times where God has opened doors that it didn't make any sense, where yes. people people approached me about stuff and like, hey, would you want to do this? And then there's other doors that feel like I should have been open that just closed for no reason, you know? Um, and so, so there's all of those things going on simultaneously. And if we're really seeking the word of God, we're gonna explore every one of those. Yeah. yeah. I believe, man, key, because the, the, the Bible is a big, scary book with so many, you know, so many pages and so many directions and Old Testament and New Testament and so many prophets. And so it, there's, it's hard to sometimes even know where to go in Scripture. And sometimes, depending on what's going on in your life, um, the voice of God can be kind of crazy sounding. So, man, ask somebody. Yes. Ask yeah. somebody, get some help, and, and from somebody who knows, um, somebody who knows scripture. Ask a pastor. Ask ask a friend who goes to church. Ask somebody, get some help, 
um, because sometimes they can help you see through uh, the fog. I mean, that happened all the time in Scripture. There are times in Scripture where Jesus himself goes away to talk to his dad about what's going on, to pray. And so, yeah, get some help. Ask somebody. Um, and they will get you on the right track. So, yeah, definitely um, talk to other people. Good people. Yeah. yeah right people. Uh, good counsel. Bad people can, uh, can bring you down. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, what about these people that come to you and say, hey, Dr. Nichols, God has told me this for you to do. Mm-hmm. So one of the things I, <laughs> as I said, because I'm, a, I'm a, a child of God, if he's revealing that to me, he will reveal that to me. Um, yeah. and, and so often, like if it comes about like starting a ministry or I, you know, yes. God told me you need to be doing this, you know, that type of thing. Um, I will. I will often say, but God didn't reveal that to me, but He revealed it to you, and I will support you, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And and that's a, a wonderful way because we. I think those times it's often out of fear that people will yes. kind of like, oh, let's yeah. let's go get the professional Christian to, um, yes. you know, instead. But the reality is, we're we're all, <laughs> you know, yeah. as believers, we are uh, have equal access and connection to God because you're as close to God as you want to be. That's, that's the reality. You're as close to God as you want to be, um, but it's real easy to fall in love with religion and rituals and other things that kind of keep God at arm's distance, but you do what you think will appease him. Um, and we kind of start to make God this totem pole uh, that we're just trying to say, hey, don't kill my family and I'll do things, that, you know, yeah. like that. And instead of Man, you're a loving yes. God. I want to yeah. be as close yeah. to you as I can. I want to, and, and you know, it's that that phrase that, uh, or that saying that says, you know, when you mess up, you kind of have two views of God. One is, uh, oh no, I messed up. I can't tell my dad because mm-hmm. he's going to kill me. And the other is, oh no, I messed up. I've got to tell my dad so he can help me. He's going to know what to do. Um, we kind of have that two views of God. You know, we either when we see ourselves uh, slipping away into things we know we shouldn't be doing, we we either run from him or we run to him. Yes. You know, uh, but yeah, I think that uh, when somebody has a, a word for you, the, one of the things I always tell them is, is if that's what God wants me to do, ask him to reveal it to me yeah. because I'm asking him to reveal it to me. Yeah. 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 And I think that goes right. with that comfortability that God revealed to me earlier. Like you said, like mm-hmm. you, you're, uh, God is going to have you, if he's revealing that to you and then you push it off to somebody else, that just confirms even more that it was really mm-hmm. meant for you and you can ask for help because yeah. evidently they put Dr. Nichols in their God put Dr. Nichols in his life whoever the, asking the question mm-hmm. and to there but they so oh no this was meant for him no I like how you said uh, professional Christians people do look at people <laughs> like that just because you know you're you're uh, you surrendered more mm-hmm. you know and you they see the the fruits of God and then they resort to, oh, he's, he's much better than me, when that's not the truth at all. So I think that, yeah, if you're being pushed and you're being uncomfortable, that's most of the time God talking to you, too. Especially if you can see an outcome that's going to be 100% positive, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, um, so, yeah, I, I think that's a good way to, um, you know, just kind of have them re-look at, hey, no, I think that was meant for you. You know what I'm saying? I, I like that, Doc. Yeah. Well... What else we got on this subject? <laughs> uh, I uh, I don't think that God speaks to us in these big, long diatribes of uh, these big paragraphs, books even, of direction. I think that any time he moves in our lives, it's going to be quick and short. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, no, go here, do that, mm-hmm. uh, speak, speak to him, speak to her read this. I, I think it's going to be something very, very short and sweet. Um, I think that God then opens up big things. Uh, but a lot of people are looking for these giant things when God just simply uh, is very short and sweet. You know, move here, go here, do that. Yes, no, beware, you know, those yeah. kind of well, and I think that, yeah, sometimes when people are asking, like, they want this big, grand revelation, um, but they haven't been obedient to the simple thing that God's no, told man. them. He's not going to reveal right. greater and greater things, you know. It's That's like a, a good one. 
I saw a, a sign the other day. It says, don't tell me you'll die for your faith when you won't even go to church for it. Mm. You know, so, That's a good one. <laughs> you know, and, um, and so we have to, gosh, I nearly knocked my glasses off my head. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think we, we have to be listening because often in scripture, God spoke through these very peaceful, quiet ways. I mean, so you have Elijah in like 1 Kings uh, 18 and 19, and when he goes and, and it says that when he's uh, out in the mountains, you know, that there was the great fire that came through an earthquake, this wind, but it tells us each time, well, God wasn't in this, this big display. He wasn't in the storm. He wasn't in the earthquake. He wasn't in the fire. And then there's this whisper that comes kind of from the back of the cave to, to, to Elijah. And he just simply asked him, hey, hey, Elijah, what are you doing? And that's often the question I think God asks a lot of us because we already know the answer, yeah, yeah. you know? And yeah, I, I can give you a, a great example in my life of how God spoke to me through a Spider-Man movie. <laughs> uh, Spider-Man 2, Tobey Maguire. Yeah. So I come to this point in my life where I, I did not want to be a pastor. I did not want to lead a church. I wanted to live a simple life with my wife and kids. And so in a very real essence, I was in a form turning my back on God, what God wanted me to do. And so I've always been into comic books and superheroes. Spider-Man 2 came out. Everybody was busy, so I went to the movies by myself one day. Well, if you know anything about that movie in Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man or Peter Parker decides he doesn't want to be Spider-Man oh, yeah. anymore. Mm -hmm. He wants to be a student. He wants to go study science, and he wants to just do that. He doesn't want to be involved in saving people, being a super... No, nope, he doesn't want to do that. Um, being Spider-Man was thrust upon him. It's not what he wanted. So he goes about his life. He's happy in college, and he walks by an alley one day and he looks down the alley and there's this guy getting mugged and in his mind and in his heart he knows that he can do something about it but he doesn't want to and then throughout the movie he realizes that he is spider-man yes. he's not going to be able to escape that it is now who he is and that message was what i needed in my life it, i i am a pastor i am called to help people and to teach people I'm not going to be able to escape that and, and and part of that was because I was living in a worldview or a filter where I filtered everything through the voice of God what is he trying to do to me what is he trying to say to me what is he trying to show me and so yeah he spoke to me through a Spider-Man movie and I never looked back I so, believe it yeah that was Sitting all by myself in that theater, just bawling. <laughs> Sorry. Like, like. Well, personally, I'm, I'm glad that you listened. You yeah. Know? And, and you know what's really amazing about that story is that everybody who was making that movie may have not been a Christian, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. And yeah. so God was using them uh, to come to that resolution, and that may have, you may have not been the only person that that kind of hit with. You know what I mean? That that's pretty amazing how God can use just about anything well he created it you know we just don't give uh, honor yes god did create spider-man in a sense you know he created, he created stan lee you know so well, i was waiting for when he was saying he's like and i realized that was myself i was like mark spider-man <laughs> that would be it's cool a great too. reveal and i'll be like i'm that man you yeah. know like, yeah, but uh, yeah, the, so that's that's amazing, you know. Yeah. Like, all these writers, all it takes a billion people to make that movie, mm -hmm. and not all of them were, were Christians. And but he, he used that to show you just who you are, you are, and who you really already knew you were supposed that's to right, be, right? You know, right. already, but, uh, knew, yeah. yeah. And that's that's I think that's a lot of the point because God is what He's at the beginning of the time, He's right here, and He's at the end, so mm -hmm. He. He already knows. It just, like you said, just takes some people hit over the head a little more than others. But, uh, man, this this has been good, man. Yeah, yeah. I think this is one of those things where you you just keep uh, keep seeking the Lord. Like, yeah, if you're not sure, yes, do it. And, uh, you know, where, where, what God's telling you, keep seeking Him. And, and don't leave any resources unexhausted that you know you ought to go to. Those, yes. those ones that we talked about. You know, if you're wondering what the will of God is, but you're not praying and talking with him, 
How, how is it going to speak to your heart? If mm -hmm. you're wanting to know what the will of God is, but you're not in his revealed will, his word, uh, the Bible, how will you ever know what his will is? Um, if you're wanting to know what his will is and maybe, you know, in areas that you don't quite see in yourself, if you don't talk to other people, how can, you know, because we have these yeah. blinders on. We don't see, every, we're, not, we're not always seeing everything about ourselves, and we're not always honest about what we're seeing. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we need other mature believers, and if you're you're just not uh, connecting with a, a, a solid church family, it's, you're going to struggle. You were never meant to do anything in this life alone. I mean, you know that's a that's a lie that uh, yeah, we've probably. been we've told. You know, but uh, yeah, yeah. Kind of kind of here's what I have for you today, and sort of like Dr. Nichols, this is my very simplified way of looking at it. But I think that God speaks to us five different ways. I think that he speaks to us through reading scripture. I think that he speaks to us in our prayers. I think that he speaks to us through attending church. I think that he speaks to us through uh, solid counsel, hanging out with good Christian people and even other people that are good. Mm -hmm. But uh, And I think that God speaks to us through the circumstances in life. Mm -hmm. So if we're not reading scripture and we're not praying, we're not going to church and we're not hanging out with the right people the only way that God has to speak to us is through the circumstances in life and they are probably not going to be the best no. if he's trying to get our attention so something bad happens we begin to pray uh, we start reading the scripture so like, oh, I'll decide to go to church maybe I'll ask so-and-so um, so I the best thing we can do is try every day to keep those five avenues open for God to pour into us, and He does. And what I want to leave you with is, uh, I almost hate to go there, but feelings. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling confused, if you're feeling fearful, that, that is never from God. Um, uh, if you're feeling peace uh, and certainty, that is from God. So that's kind of a quick grading scale of, of what's going on in your heart. So, yeah. And just lastly, I, I, I love what you just talked about, uh, the feelings too. Um, but sometimes our feelings can also, uh, how can I put this, can be uh, misinterpreted through ourselves. So that's why it's good to bounce those feelings off of other people because they can, we, we try to hide stuff like, oh, everything's okay, but You've, you've, we've had it, oh, we're thinking every, we're hiding things and then your friends or family come in and say, hey, what's wrong? And you're like, what? How did you, how did you know something was wrong? Mm -hmm. So even when those feelings uh, stay true, but also get that good counsel. Like we can't stress that enough how, yes. like Dr. Nixon said, we weren't even meant to be alone. You know what I'm saying? We were meant to have this community. We were meant to have brothers and sisters in the battlefield with us. So yes. rely on them. So when you have those feelings, you know, be honest with yourself. I'm not feeling the best. Let me go to my trusted counsel. Don't just talk to anybody. Yeah. We don't want, you just don't want to talk to anybody, but go to your trusted counsel and rely on them. Be truthful with yourself first then be truthful, 100% uh, truthful with them. Find a couple people you can be 100% yes. truthful. And I know that's hard to do yeah. because, you know, people will hurt you sometime, right? But there are people out there and then also come to the battlefield. Check, check us out, ask us questions. YouTube channel, battlefield.co, website, battlefield.co, and just, just join us. We're here. We want to help you. This is what we're doing. And um, just just until next time, just take our words of wisdom and uh, rely on God. God is God yes. is behind all this. Yes. This is could not happen without God, you know. Um, and that takes reading your Bible, too, getting that word. So until next time, we, we love you. We thank you for joining us, and we'll see you on the battlefield.